from Super League to Olympic distance to age group world records to Kona. Go longer with the right fuel at the right time with S Fuels. everybody welcome back to a championship edition of breakfast with bob from beautiful saint george my name is bob babbitt brought to you by master spa zoot sports the original triathlon brand hoka let's fly as fuels go longer biostarks.com use the code bwb10 for 10 percent discount quintana root form smart swim goggles zion's bank premium plus sports and of course our challenged athletes foundation he took third yesterday and he has had a phenomenal season which included a huge win at challenge roth magnus deep joins us magnus is always a treat to get to chat with you especially on a championship edition yeah thanks for having me bob uh, i remember before the race we talked that it, we've been talking quite a lot but never at a, at a championship edition so it's good to have this one as the first <laughs> exactly and so it was funny because uh, when we were we were up here doing the women's uh, conversations yesterday for the championship edition, and we're looking out, and there goes Christian, and there goes Ben, and there goes Magnus, and that's pretty much the way it stayed the rest of the day. Yeah, definitely. It was like uh, we entered T2, uh, Christian, Ben, and also uh, Frederick Funk yes. together, very close. And then Christian uh, and Ben had a very fast transition, so they were... Uh, a bit ahead of me. Yes. Oh, no, Ben actually called me very early on and then bridged up to Christian. Yes. And then we ran maybe I was 30 to 50 seconds behind them for the f whole first loop. Right. And was actually feeling pretty well on the run, uh, hoping that one of them would blow up because it was it had been a really hard bike ride. So I figured that maybe some of them would uh, pay for that later, yes. but they kept it together and uh, I could just uh, run in third the whole way. <laughs> well, what's interesting is you when you look at what everything, all the racing that Christian has in his legs, not even including the training with Sub 7 <coughs> and uh, St. George and Kona, and you think, okay, there's you never know when someone's going to crack out there. Yeah, and I think I could, it was, uh, you could tell yesterday that he didn't run as smooth as he usually does. Mm. Like normally, uh, even though I was running uh, pretty good, I could just tell that normally he will just take off and I will never see him again. But right. I could see him for the whole first lap. So I figured, okay, maybe there is a crack in the armor. <laughs> but uh, then it it showed that he was just playing with us. And the last five kilometers, he really <laughs> accelerated. So being being so young and being in the sport really for not that long, because you I think you missed basically a full season with, with injury, uh, are you, have you surprised yourself at how quickly you become one of the very top athletes in this sport? Uh, yes, it has been uh, like a fairy tale story and quite, uh, of course, you want to believe it, but it's still hard to believe when I was out with injury, as you say, for one year and then COVID hit for one year. So it was basically two years where I was telling myself I was a professional, but I, ha I was just training like mad, but did not race anything because of in injuries and COVID. So it was quite hard to believe at that time that I could become First, the goal was just to be competitive in the right. pro field, but it actually showed quite quickly that I had some potential, and then things just sort of took on from there. What race did you have that you that made you realize, okay, I can be one of the best? Uh, I think it was uh, so the fir one of the first races after uh, the co COVID, uh, when we st it started opening up again, was uh, uh, seventy point three in Poland, where I won. Yes, and qualified. And I didn't qualify there, but it was the reason I got a wild card for Daytona, mm. uh, the PTO championship. Yes, and that was probably the like the race where I, I thought, okay, because I made some hu huge mistakes there, but still uh, was especially with my bike there was really good. But we knew that I had basically got zero calories on the bike because I lost everything <laughs> and I remember that. almost uh, no water at all. So we knew that the run would be just a matter of fixing that and then, then it would be better so that was probably the race where 
we thought, okay, there is actually. <laughs> yes. And, and being patient, though, and understanding that it's not going to all come and you're not going to come out of nowhere and beat all the best guys in the world, that it's a little bit of a, uh, there's growing pains to go along with it. Yeah, I you know. It's, I think what my coach and I have been good at is like uh, spotting some things that, like the errors and then actually correcting them yes uh, so i feel like we don't usually make the same errors a lot of times <laughs> so uh so that's and it also comes down to my team i think i have yes. a really good coach that supports me uh every day and some experts in physiology and nutrition right. and all that stuff so we can pretty quickly like uh, solve some problems that <laughs> when your bike ride yesterday when you go sub two hours on this course that's that's pretty impressive yeah last year it was also sub two hours but i think because of the warmer temperatures last year you naturally go much quicker so <laughs> it was good that it was one hour 59 <laughs> minutes and 59 seconds <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah. and the other you know the rest of this year when you were second pto us open that was a great race because you're mm. racing people coming from shorter distance and you've become a, like a long distance specialist that that was having a race like you had at the u.s open had to make you feel okay i've i've got the speed to race well here in uh, st george yeah definitely i think i always have had quite a lot of like high-end speed so yes. i wasn't necessarily worried about the the speed it was more coming uh, from kona three weeks uh, yes how to recover mentally and and those sorts of things so it was not for me it was not an issue of the speed and also on the on the bike i'm ex extremely like powerful in small searches yes. so what we've been training this year has actually more been what you would call like long distance mm -hmm. training towards more Ironman, but I think it also has benefited me on just becoming much stronger on a 70.3, especially on a course like this, where it's really <laughs> a strong man's course. It, it is definitely a strong man's course. You're 24 years old. You're still living at home. <laughs> yeah, when, I, when I'm home, I live at home. You live with your mom and dad. I haven't been home for eight weeks now. So, yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, we live. I still live at my mom and dad, and then my girlfriend, uh, we sort of switch between being at my pl mom and dad's place and then her parents' <laughs> place. That's really fun. And because you're living at home and you've, you're, you understand this is a career, and rather than grab every sponsor that comes at you, you're going to be very selective and make sure that you connect with somebody, I'm guessing, who's going to be with you for the long haul. Yeah, so I think that comes down to my approach to the sport in general i've always been extremely uh, uh, like paying attention to every detail uh, especially on i think the bike is the obvious uh, mm -hmm. example where you can really go into into the details of aerodynamic and dynamic and all sorts of things there so there has been quite some uh, good sponsorship mm -hmm. uh, opportunities but i all the things I'm using in racing, I've tested them out uh, multiple times. So I don't. Ma I want to make sure that I sign with the brands I really trust and know is actually the best uh, choice for me. I, I, there seems to be a lot of. I see a lot of different styles of aero bars. <laughs> People are there's yeah. a lot of different. And what is, what are you using and and why? Um, so. The whole actually after my uh, <laughs> my race in Texas, we started building. Uh, we started a project of uh, building a custom uh, cockpit with the aero integrated aero bar. So yes. it's sort of a mono cockpit, yes. uh, and it has been taking the whole year, and uh, it has to undergo a lot of strength testing. So to right. make sure it's not uh, <laughs> cracking under him. pressure yeah. when you are doing like that. So and we tested it out in the wind tunnel to see if uh, there were any gains and make sure that it was actually faster because it's stupid to spend uh, a lot <laughs> of money on some something that is not <laughs> making you faster. And then. We just managed to have it ready one week before Coda, <laughs> so <laughs> so that's what I'm uh, writing now, and it's it's a private uh, like person that has made it himself, who's an engineer. So right. it, was, it has really been a fun project, and that's also what I really love about uh, triathlon is that there is also all sorts of areas, also just in the swim with technique and right. all so yeah, where you can really dig into it. It's not just about switching off your brain and go out there and smash some <laughs> some intervals you can actually yeah really dig into stuff 
Well, it's it's fascinating because technology wise, and we've seen it with the Norwegians, where they're all they're testing products, they find products they like, and they become partners with yep. in that product. And that sounds like you're doing a lot of that as well. Yeah, I think our approach is uh, quite similar. Of course, they have a much bigger team behind them at the moment, and rightfully so. So they have some resources that uh, I maybe don't have, but I'm trying to, yeah. You're getting there. Getting there. <laughs> yeah. And over the years, I mean, you had a, a race with Jan Frodeno. I think that was, was that Clash Miami. Uh, so you, you get to see some of the best guys up close and personal. What do you learn from that when you have a race like that? And then the same thing when you at Challenge Roth. He was there with you until, what, just a couple K into the run when he, when he pulled out. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, it's funny what you really learn. I think what you actually learn is that they are also human and they are not also just racing Christian. He's maybe the <laughs> the modern <laughs> version of uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, and that they are actually also just like normal human beings. And both in racing and outside of the <laughs> outside of racing, it's I can't see why I shouldn't be able to beat them. But of course, it's. It's really cool to in Roth I was riding with uh, Frodo and just yeah you can just see that he he knows what he's doing and he's been in the game for so long so he has some tricks and also running uh, behind Sebi and Kona for you know, running running with Sebi and yes. taking turns with him was quite special and so yeah uh, this year has just been like you talked about you're running with Sebi in Kona you're racing again you know with Christian here uh, Frodo at, uh, in Miami and just all these just and, and, and at Roth uh, these are great lifetime experiences and do you look at this as your best year? Yeah definitely I think uh, last year was my first like full yes. season I would say yeah, yeah. so uh, this year is definitely I think last year uh, was actually quite a good <laughs> season for it me. It was and too. Yes. Uh, I was in PTO ranked number 14 or something and I thought starting this year okay uh, if I can get into top 10, that would be really nice. And now I'm sitting here in third, uh, as a th third in the PTO ranking and third at 70.3 World Championships. So <laughs> that's pretty cool. That is really cool. What will the, now is your season done? Uh, we'll have to make a plan now. I've not been thinking too much about. That's good. Uh, you wait till this yeah, race is over. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to see how Kona went and how this one went, and then we'll uh, see. Well, in third here, eighth in Kona with the, the five minute penalty. And so you, you you know realistically you probably would have been third if you would have been top five for sure if that penalty doesn't happen when you get hit with a penalty like that it's real easy to okay i'm i'm gonna pull the plug i'm gonna go do a different race yeah. you can lose it mentally what did you learn about yourself when you deal with a hardship like that yeah i think i've had some uh, some issues also in texas with the puncture so i, yes. I tried to get to like uh, uh, yeah, go back to that scenario and think what did I do there and how did I approach that and uh, I just like also in Kona it was a big thing for me to just if I had dropped out after like the bike for instance I wouldn't know okay you have swim and you have biked the course in Kona but you don't like it's only on the marathon that it really gets tough so then I would come back next year and I would think okay the swim and bike was really good but I ha would have no idea how the marathon would be. So it was also important for me to get through the marathon and have a sense of how does it actually feel to be running uh, on alley drive, running in the energy lab, and how tough is the last 10 kilometers actually. So I also wanted to make it a big learning experience since it was also my first time in Kona. So, yeah. You were scouting. Yeah. Sc scouting <laughs> for the future. And you ran a 248 after dealing with, you know, with, with the penalty. Uh, you talked about going in the energy lab that last 10k what did you think just that that because usually <laughs> you can there's a lot of potential position changes between yeah. the energy lab and the finish yeah so i was i think i was running when i was at the bottom of energy lab i was in sixth or something yes and i was going out a bit too hard in the hope of like maybe getting back into the race and right. having a feel of okay i'm actually in contention for maybe the podium or something like that but then coming up of uh, going up the hill in energy lab and entering queen k again it sort of was that was really the critical moment for me because uh, that's where it really started to hurt and then i could also see that my strategy with going out 
<laughs> hard and hoping for people to come back to me was not working. So that was really why I had to dig deep. And I'm glad that I got that experience because yes. now I know how long it can be the last <laughs> 10 kilometers <laughs> home from. I think people always talk about the energy lab is hard, but I think I thought it was more the way back. That yes. was when you just know, okay, I have to run 10 kilometers now, just straight. Straight. Energy Lab was actually okay because then you have the downhill and it's a lot of like some small turns right. and you can sort of <laughs> break it up and okay now just go to the turnaround and then up the hill. But it was mostly for me going back on Queen K that was just straight so now ahead you know. <laughs> and the rolling terrain. Yeah. Well, and then you start hearing the the announcer when <laughs> as far as you get towards Polani and it's yeah. still a long way. It's yeah. still okay <laughs> to yeah. go. But then when I hit the top of the, I think it's maybe with one or two kilometers yep. left, then it was really nice because that was just downhill. And actually the last two kilometers was the fastest uh, kilometers at my whole marathon because I was just, now I just want to get to the finish line. And it was downhill and yes. people were going crazy. So the, It's always interesting to me when people get into Ironman when they're young because I think there's a point where you can be too and too many. It's because mm. it's not just the racing, it's a long training, you know, five hour bike rides, all that. Are you trying to monitor yourself and say, okay, I'm, I only want to do X number of full Ironman distance events a year? Uh, so this is my first season, season doing Ironman events. So we want to see also how, yes, uh, actually how my body, body has knows. reacted extremely well to it. So after Kona, I wasn't, it, it almost felt like I benefited from racing Kona, which is quite weird because then I took some easy days in Kona yes. and traveled here. And then when once I got here, I just felt my legs were just, uh, especially were on the bike, they were really good. So <laughs> it's, uh, but it's still unknown territory and we are trying to learn and trying to see how, what works for us. But definitely, I think I don't want to get to a point where I'm, my whole season is depending on doing Ironman races. I want to mix it up with both 70.3 and also the new PTO events that's coming up will be a, uh, yeah, a big priority of mine in the future. Love it. Magnus, thank you for taking time. It's, it's wonderful to have you <laughs> on a championship edition. Hopefully yeah. we'll be doing this a lot more. Hopefully. Yeah, thank <laughs> you, Bob. Magnus Dietliff has been our guest. Third place Ironman 70.3 World Championship here in St. George. Hold on. We will be right back.